Hey everyone, today's video we're going to see if an electric fan really can outperform a mechanical fan and does it equate to more power that's actually relatable at the track. Let's get into it. All right, but before we put this electric fan in, we need to go to the track and see what this thing will run with the stock mechanical fan. That way we can use some numbers, we can compare it with our after numbers and see does putting an electric fan in a vehicle that has a mechanical fan directly relate to a quicker ET or a faster mile an hour? Let's go into the track and see what we can run. Now it's important to note that I tried to keep this comparison as equivalent as possible. Uh, both times we went out, they had E85, I had the passenger side headlight removed, and I tried to use ice in both runs, but unfortunately I could only use ice in the beginning. So let's see what it did before the fan swap. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, what we're working on is our 2009 Chevrolet Trailblazer LT. This is a four-wheel drive, 4.2 liter Atlas 4200 inline six Trailblazer that we have used an RTEC Performance Turbo Manifold. We put an S372 Turbo. We have an air-to-water intercooler setup utilizing a 6.7 power stroke uh, air-to-water intercooler and generic CTSV upgradable heat exchanger and uh, a few, few other things. Still stock returnless style system. We have a uh, really big fuel pump in there, Walboro 485 and it's on E85. We have flex fuel, yada yada. So what I'm doing here is removing the factory mechanical fan and we went with the PCM of North Carolina single electric fan setup. Now on the E67 the mechanical fan that's used is no longer controlled by the computer it's actually a thermostatic mechanical fan. Uh, this being said uh, you have to pin the wire into the ECU which you can see what I'm doing now is removing connector 3 um, getting ready to pin I believe it's pin number 39. Uh, this pin will trigger the relay to allow the fan to come on at the appropriate temperature you put in the tune. Um, and I gotta say the overall quality of this of this kit from PCM of North Carolina is, is awesome. Uh, we got it installed in no time. It's a really clean install, really good parts. But I will say we ran into some issues along the way. Nothing with their product more so with our rusted transmission cooler lines, which I'll get to in a second. Here I'm installing the fan patch that PCM of NC sends you, and you'll see here soon that the fan comes on no problem and everything works as it should. So as we finished the install, I noticed a puddle on the ground and it was actually transmission fluid coming from a pinhole leak I had created in the rusty transmission cooler lines, which definitely sucked. In my attempt to remove the stock lines, I actually wound up breaking the stock radiator. The transmission cooler is kind of its separate uh, system down below the radiator and the coolant and the transmission fluid should never mix. Well, trying to remove one of the trans cooler lines. I wound up breaking the fitting that threads into the plastic bottom of the transmission cooler and then on top of that coolant started leaking out of the transmission oil cooler which definitely was a sign that it was bad so might as well upgrade it to an aluminum core radiator since we're planning on taking this on sick week and this is actually about the same price as a stock radiator and it's honestly way nicer. The next thing we had to do since we obviously had an issue with these rusty transmission lines we just cut out all of the stock lines that we could and used transmission oil cooler hose and a flaring tool to kind of flare the stock lines where they were good and not rusted and we ran transmission cooler hose from the new stub ends off of the, the new radiator all the way back to the transmission uh, which just kind of like six inches of line coming off the transmission. But that being said, we eliminated a lot of the problems after trying to make it work. And now we haven't had any issues. Everything works great. All right, back at the track with the electric fan installed. 
Uh, I'm not gonna lie on the way here, I got a little nervous. I thought the trans had said, I don't want any more, but in the fiasco of uh, losing trans fluid, I just did not put enough trans fluid back in. So the first time I got on it, it slipped. I just steadily drove it to the auto parts store. I added a quart and a half of trans fluid, left the store, got on it again, no problem. So if it's gonna let go, it may let go right now, but let's get into it and let's see if this thing really does pick up any time, uh, any speed, uh, or you know, just any major improvement over what it did with the mechanical fan. Now in the beginning of this video I said I tried to make the comparison as equal as possible. So both runs were made with the passenger side headlight out, they both had half a tank of E85, same tire pressure, same wheels, everything. But unfortunately the concession stand which sells bags of ice did not have ice for the comparison run with the e-fan installed so unfortunately i had no ice on these runs but we'll get into that at the end of the video So what does all this mean? So obviously there was no crazy difference between the times that we ran with the mechanical fan and with the electric fan. But the big difference is when we ran with the mechanical fan, we had a tank full of ice. Now, consistently and historically, when I have run with ice in the ice tank, I can see about 20 degrees below ambient on the top end of the track. Uh, now. If you look up what an ice tank can yield in terms of horsepower, for every 10 degrees that you can drop your intake air temperature by, you can see a horsepower increase of anywhere between five to nine horsepower. So let's just split the difference there and call it seven horsepower for every 10 degrees that you can drop your IATs. Well, if I'm dropping it 20 below ambient, typically I'm going to see about a 14 horsepower increase with ice now that being said with my after runs being just regular water driving it to the track no ice in the tank and having within hundreds of a second of the same time i ran with ice i think we can logically deduce that the electric fan picks up roughly 14 horsepower that's equatable to the track now unfortunately i understand it is probably not the direct one-for-one one, uh, comparison that you would like to see and it's really not the one-for-one one that I wanted to provide however uh, that is what I had to do with the time that I had to work with uh, unfortunately this video did take about two weeks worth of time and installs without all the trouble that we had uh, but that being said you know even talking with Calvin um, you know he, he had a pretty good statement you know if a scientist were to do this they would probably throw these results out and start from scratch to get an actual comparable everything is the same however i don't have that time and this is what i got but that being said in my mind and from the let's say the butt dyno in the car i can tell you for a fact that the electric fan does make a difference it's much more responsive you free up all of that uh weight that's that's having to be spun right and now all of a sudden it's a little bit more responsive it's a little bit more peppy so great product from pcm of north carolina i would highly recommend anyone get it if you're on the fence and that being said uh, thank you for watching and hopefully i will see you in the next one